Watcher, guess who? I bet you uh, you guys never thought you'd see me again, or at least for a long time. Well, it's been a long time, hasn't it, really? Um, I haven't really done too much in terms of posting on this page, obviously, because I've not been fishing, as you probably guessed. Um, I think I was sort of doing an update once a year, just that you guys know how I am, and, you know, uh, I get loads of little messages. That I, unfortunately, I don't come on this page and I don't check messages, unfortunately because I don't really post on it, but um, I've been using Facebook, my private Facebook, a little bit more lately, so I thought I'd come over to this page and just sort of check uh, check on it, if it's still actually open, still functioning, and, and fortunately it is, even though I don't update on it, so I think it was about a week ago, I actually posted up on uh, on the, uh, um, a couple of memory pictures, pictures that I, I'd gone out and I'd I'd gone fishing and it was the last time I'd went and had my last session for Pike and just seeing a lot of memory pictures come through like on my private or Facebook and uh, going through my hard drive when I've got a new computer I've got, I've got a brand new um, PC my first ever own PC and um, <clears throat> I was swapping a lot of old photos and videos and stuff like that over from my laptop uh, onto sort of portable hard drives and stuff and I was coming across all my, my old fishing pictures and stuff like that and fishing videos and just little other things that I've been finding in my room and that way I've been tidying it up just sort of because I put all my fishing I've literally packed all my fishing stuff away I mean I have the odd little trinket bits and pieces out here and there things like floats that I've made and I just have them sitting on the side um, it's such a little beautiful thing that I I love uh, perch floats it's one of my favorite things I'll talk about those in a bit and um yeah just uh just getting the buzz of watching i've been watching a lot more fishing on youtube as well and i've noticed it's it's not as prolific maybe i'm not watching the new channels and stuff like that need to sort of find some new channels but it's not as prolific as what it once was and um i don't know i feel my my taste in fishing's changed as well it's been nearly five years since i was out on the bank out fishing and i miss it so much you know you guys know I, I really, you know, I didn't get out as much as I wanted to. Um, leading up to me being housebound because of my health, you know, because of my health. It wasn't just lockdown. Obviously, that put a, uh, that drew the curtain for me for now. For now. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But, um, yeah, I just I wasn't getting out nowhere near as much as I'd love to. All I did was talk about it more than actually going and fish, which was uh, it's a bit of a shame, but... It was the next best thing for me, really. Um, people just kept saying to me, oh, you need to get out more, you need to get out more. It was all well and good saying that, but when your health is deteriorating and you was, you could sort of barely get to work, back and forward from work, and especially during the long hours, and it was very, uh, it wasn't just a normal nine to five job, it was an arduous night shift um, security job I was doing. Like I say, very, very long hours, very little sleep um someone of my size over 40 stone plus trying to uh walk quite a few miles a night took it out of you so yeah it's uh it all led up to to me probably having to leave that job eventually if, if covid never had happened anyway um if lockdown never happened anyway so but anyway uh just update you on my health my health's not really sort of changed too much if not it's it's not got much better uh, I feel like I've been left on the shelf a lot by um, my surgical team and unfortunately the NHS. I'm not having a go at them. It's just that's what's happened. It's happened to a lot of people and it's just only now things are starting to, the ball's starting to roll a little bit more now. I've got my head's, I don't know where I'm coming. I'm going all over the place with uh, speaking to all different members of uh, of the team. It was quite a small team for a team of five or six. Now it's all different people from mental health to sleep apnea which i'm going in hospital for for a couple of nights in um end of december uh, no end of november i'm going in to to be checked over and stuff um i've definitely got worse in my health at home over that period of time since lockdown when i was meant to have the operation just as that started um so yeah i've got i've you know so the answer to it to the answer to what i'm trying to you know to, to cut a long story short is that i'm no better off now than i was five years ago if, if not worse so yeah just need to uh make sure that i stay on top of my mental health that's the most important thing uh, keep insane i don't know how i've done five years it's like a prison sentence how i've done five years at home but 
you know, if it wasn't for good friends of mine having uh, lots to keep me busy through uh, being indoors and um, having lots of interest, then I, I would have gone absolutely crazy. And having fishing taken away from me as well, that that hurt a lot. Uh, there was a long period of time where I wasn't, I wouldn't even look at a fishing video or look at fishing photos. I literally, that's one of the reasons why I came away from Facebook. So I didn't get to see all the, the fishing side of things, the angling side of things. Because my, my personal page, as well as this uh, group, just was, it's just littered with fishing, angling. So yeah, I decided to uh, venture into other hobbies. You know, I am a big Peter Pan at heart. I don't have children don't have a wife so you know I, I feel I've never grown up I think if I'd have had those I probably have grown up a bit more and have a bit more responsibility but unfortunately I don't have that so uh, in the meantime while I'm waiting for things to finally get sorted and hopefully get this operation done because it's nearly 10 years uh, since I started the journey it should have only took five years from 2015 which again led up to 2020 when it should have happened it's stuck another five years on top of my prison sentence, so to speak. So, yeah, it's been nearly 10 years. So, yeah, to keep myself busy, I've kind of found other hobbies and other ways to keep my mind ticking. Um, you know, from uh, most of it's geeky stuff that a lot of you might not be interested in. Things like building Lego. Um, I play D&D &D once a week with my friends, which is really cool. I really enjoy it. Brings back a lot of childhood memories. I'm really into my pop culture, into my retro stuff. So I love all that kind of stuff as well. So, yeah. Um, so that's what's keeping my focus at the moment. Um, but I've got to admit, recently, like I say, I've, I've sort of tuned back into my Facebook. All my family and friends are on there. So it's nice to stay engaged with those people um but starting to see a lot more fishing again and starting to watch a lot of fishing videos you've got matt and mick any of you guys who are a big fan of uh, matt hayes and mick mick brown i mean i love mick brown mick brown is like my fishing idol since i first started fishing you know predator angler extraordinaire but the geezer's retired i mean the geezer's old and he's still out there doing it he's still going out there and making these tv programs but the fact that matt and the whole fishing community who crowdfunded to get them to come back and done it fairly easily. I was part of that. I crowd, I put my crowdfunding in, so hopefully I'll get to watch the, the shows, which they're actually filming now. I think they're on episode three or four that they're filming at the moment in Norfolk. I think they've just spoken about um, one of the episodes is dedicated to John, the late John Wilson, which again, more than anything, I'm buzzing for that particular episode. So... I think that really sort of lit the fire in me a little bit and, and the excitement of uh, bringing back childhood, I wouldn't say childhood memories, but you know, when I was memories when I was younger. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to fish when I was a child, which I feel like I've uh, missed out on quite a lot of fishing. Um, even in the early days, I wish my uncle had took me fishing. But I think I've spoken about that before. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm back looking at fishing. I'm keeping an eye on things, watching videos. I've just watched a cracking video from the Sweet Corn Kids Stew. Um, you don't see many people using perch bobs anymore. Traditional. There's a lot of people making traditional floats, and I'm part of that traditional float community, or I was when I was making them. I haven't made any for about five years, and probably would have been a perfect opportunity just, you know, being at home, not going to work to make a few, but... I don't know, being a fishing thing, I, I, I couldn't bring myself to make them. So these are some of the old ones that I've made and I, I just keep sitting on the side. Um, I just I just love perch bobs. I think they're so traditional, they're so beautiful. These are ones I made myself. And I can't wait to, to fish for these, I really can't. And I'm gonna start making floats again, eventually. I've still got all the stuff, all the equipment. All I need to do is buy some more paints and that. Because uh, I threw a lot of my old paints away. If I can remember what ones I was using. Because I found some cracking coloured paints. Hey, do you like my little... Uh, is it Kumu? Kumu, the carp fishing uh, clothing company. They make the key rings of Kingfisher. Anybody who knows me, I love Kingfisher. So, yeah, I got myself a couple of those key rings. Um, awesome. But, yeah, I love fishing with a traditional float. And going back to what I'm saying, stew... Um, He's, I've been watching these videos and he's he's back in he's, he's doing a lot of sea fishing lately he does does a lot of traditional fishing where he uses split cane and all that uh, you guys know the sweet corn kid I'm sure you do and uh, he put a video out today it was about 12 minutes long and it was him 
going out, minimal tackle, old school tackle using a perch bob, like what you most people to use as a boy, anybody who's over 40 years old, probably we use those as a boy, as a kid to use, to catch perch and other species. It was one of the floats I very first used when I went fishing when I was 18 on my own, and I learned to fish, um, and I caught perch and bleak and all types of perch using a perch bob. And um, that brings back magic memories from then. So I can imagine what it would be like for people who use them when they was like seven, eight years old, you know what I mean? But there's, a, there's an influxation of people making these floats, traditional floats, but you never see anybody fishing with them on YouTube. It's, it's quite unusual, you know? The only type of perch fishing you tend to see on YouTube is, is lure fishing. And don't get me wrong, I love lure fishing for perch, especially using crankbaits like Rapala, little Rapala crankbaits, or um, who else makes some decent ones? Um, who's the ones that make hornets and that? Salmo, is it Salmo? Uh, they all make fantastic crankbaits. Um, you can use all the different jellies and stuff like that, which is good fun, but I like catching perch on small cranks. Um, and yeah, it's all you it's all you see on, on 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 YouTube, so it's really nice to see Stu go back out there and use traditional tactics, um, and using to, you know bait, even just bait fishing. If you had a worm on a uh, a quiver tip or like I say, uh, maybe a small brand a bunch of brandlings under a a perch bob by a little willow tree or long ball rushes, you know that's what it's like for me. And I feel that traditional slight traditional side of me. Um, which I do have within the modern style of fishing, uh, really tends to come out, you know. And it's a cracking video, and it's the video I like to sit and watch. And I hope you do make some more, and I hope other people who are making these floats, because I see so many on Facebook making these lovely traditional floats, and especially the perch bob, because it's such a, it's such a float that's so recognisable. I don't understand why there's not enough videos on YouTube people using them, which leads me up to talking about. Will I ever come back? Yes, I'd love to come back. Will I ever make fishing videos? Now, I always said that I'd probably stay away from it. But then, time's a bit of a healer. I didn't really like the videos that I put out. They're not all bad. They were half decent, some of them. I had some really good times with friends. Caught some lovely fish. When you, If I was to put a highlight reel together, which I did for one of the opening credits on, on the channel, I caught some really nice fish for the little small time I was doing that channel. And uh, they're all up there for you to watch if you still want to watch them. They're not um, not monetized, so there's no adverts in any of them. I took the monetization off. Just felt it was uh, only right not to do that. So you can still go and watch them if you want to, guys. And um, yeah, I was like, I've watched a couple of them back, and I I smiled to myself. Had some really good times, but they wasn't really the type of fishing that I would like to have done. So if I ever come back, I will probably come back. Once I'm healthy, again, that might not be two or three years down the line, depending on when things start getting moving with this operation, how quick I recover. You know, I'm literally, I'm housebound. I don't go out. Apart from hospital visits when I'm really poorly, I don't go out. So when I go out in November to stay at the hospital, it'll be the first time voluntary I've gone out in a couple of years because I literally, I live three floors up on a block of flats. I can't get downstairs. My body won't allow it. She's in too much pain. Even just every day walking around the flat, I'm in a lot of pain. So, But it's really nice to catch up with you guys. Just to let you guys know what I'm up to. Um, like I say, if I can conquer this and get through this, and I'm I'm, get, I'm finally getting a fight in me to, to pester certain relevant people, uh, push for this bloody operation. I think I deserve it now. Get this operation um, and get my life back back to normal get back out there working i miss working i don't god knows what i'll do i'd love to work for myself i'd love to um i'd love to to work for myself even maybe work from home which would allow me to go out and fish uh, get back to my local I, I miss my local so much maybe even get back to the to the syndicate lake that i uh i i joined and i had to give up membership because i literally i'd only fished there a handful of times before having to give it up because of uh because of what happened with covid and uh, and the lockdown and that so yeah it'd be nice maybe if i can afford it because it wasn't very expensive which isn't too far from my local lake as well and to get back out there and not just to fish for pike and predators but to, to get back out there and fish i don't know if it, i wouldn't even say the old school way i would say the way i, I want to fish 
really enjoy it, really immerse myself, not get caught up with too much buying this and buying that technology, which leads me on to my tackle. I have got far, far too much tackle, far more than I ever wanted to have. Um, the reason why I bought it is, like, A, it got out of hand, but it also in the back of my mind is, I knew that one day I might not be able to afford all this tackle that I really wanted to have. Um, and a bit like lures with lure anglers, they can get captured by buying so many lures. Even they capture the, they say that they capture the angler rather than uh, capturing the fish a lot of the time. And I think that's true of fishing tackle as well. I've got so many rods and reels. I'll probably eventually down the line, maybe in a year down the line when I've got time to do it, go through everything and maybe put things up on eBay for sale or something. Uh, and make a, a couple of quid because I've got a lot of brand new tackle I've never used and I've got ones I've only used maybe once or twice so I've got some real decent fishing tackle and I know that I want to cut it down at least 60% I've got far more, much more than I ever needed to, to buy and uh, looking back on it now and reflecting on it it's, uh, it's definitely something I'm looking to do in the future not in the near future but down the line start selling some of that fishing tackle making a bit more room making a few quid to uh, off the back of it which would be nice i can put into other projects and um i just have a sensible amount of tackle and fish with my favorite items to tackle for fish i want to do in the future i mean i really probably would do night fishing and if i did it would probably be on a bank in the summer's evening under a brolly as opposed to uh getting a big bed chair sleeping bag nice carp style setup and all that i think i've gone beyond that now um that style of fishing so we'll, we'll see when i return but um i just want to keep it simple i want to go back to like i say not my roots but go back to that sort of simplistic streamlined you know going out there with a the float rods and having a couple of hours fishing with some maggots and you know catching those of small silver fish and then at the end you might catch a nice sort of three pounds chub and then you go home chuff with a big smile on your face i've had days like that when i very first started fishing when i was say 18 19 and I was going down and fishing the Medway in Tunbridge and, and I was having no sessions. And I'd come home on a train, big smile on my face because I got a half pound perch in amongst a big haul of silver, small silver fish. You know, I think people sometimes forget that's essence of fishing as well as going out and catching the biggest carp you can or the biggest catfish you can or getting five or six pike in a in a session up to double figures, you know it's all well and good doing that and i love that you know that's part of fishing that's part of what brings you back that's part of what the makeup is but i think a lot of people they, they forget about the essence of fishing i think as you get older you start to realize that a little bit more but that's just that's just my opinion so yeah i mean what's else, what else has been happening in fishing and angling since i've been away really but notice two obviously two angling records have been broken two predators as well eels and pike i never thought the eels would be broken anytime soon but um it was there was a few big eels being caught over recent years i mean i joined the anguilla anguilla club just before i stopped fishing so i never managed to really sort of really get my teeth stuck in get some nice decent eels catch some nice decent eels and get immersive in the club so i had to let my membership go there which is a bit of a shame i was really looking forward to uh to, to getting really into the angling eel angling community i love eels i've been fishing for eels for years caught one of my very first session ever only a small boot lace and i loved it i found it fascinating it's very different to other fish i was a bit scared of picking them up at first but you know when you get used to it and you understand it and how to deal with them and handle them and i just love the fact that eels are getting a lot more recognition and a lot more love nowadays the only problem with that is that more fish people angling for them are not equipped to do so you know not using the right type of techniques or, or rigs and picking them up using ta tea towels and things like that still cringes me thinking about it you know don't take much to learn about it there's so much information out there on youtube facebook now of how to handle and deal with these these creatures there's no need for it but um yeah 11 pound free stephen ricketts steve ricketts it was really cool it was, if anyone was going to get a big eel like that a dedicated eel angler it probably would have been him so yeah, I'm not at all shocked or surprised that, that you know it fell to his uh, his rods. I saw the uh, Drenum video that they put out on that capture of that eel, and it was absolutely fantastic. Um, and then the pike, yeah, who'd have thought the pike one from Chew Reservoir? We knew Chew throws up massive fish. Would it ever top the record? 
it was 50-50. In my opinion, it probably would have topped the records. And eventually, you know, that managed, it's, it's very well managed water by all accounts. And uh, yeah, it threw up a 47.5, which is now the British record. Uh, a guy called Lloyd Watson. Seen the pictures. Awesome pike. Looked like a really nice fish. Didn't look like an old fish. It looked like a, a fairly healthy fish. It's probably got a few more years growing in it. So, yeah, it's fantastic to see two predators uh, get a British record. If that actually means anything nowadays. Uh, some people it does. Some people it doesn't. Um, so, yeah, that's it, really. I just thought I'd sort of touch base with you guys. Just chat a little bit about angling, how I've been, what I'm up to. You know, trust me when I say I'm... I'm thinking about it more. I'm thinking about angling more. I'm watching more angling now. I don't find it as hurtful to know that I can't go out there and fish right now. But what he's doing is he's giving me an incentive to really want to get this operation done, to get back healthy and to, to want to get back on the bank more than anything. For my own sanity and my own mental health, um, I'm gagging. And like I say, when something like this happens to you, it makes you appreciate it more. So when I finally do get on that bank, I'm going to save it every last minute of every last session that I'm sitting there and I'm fishing for fish. Because just to be back out in that fresh air, wind hitting your face, the smell and the sounds of, you know, fresh grass and rain and the sun beating down your face with the birds singing. I miss all that because I've just not had it for five years. So, and it'll probably be another year or two before that'll ever happen. So, yeah, I thought I'd touch base with you guys. Um, what I'll do is I'll leave the link in the comment section box for Stu's video if you want to watch it. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, it's a really good video. Um, Stu, Stu Harris, I think his name is. Harris, I'm sure it's Harris. Uh, the Sweet Corn Kid. Great little video. It's only 12 minutes long. Go and give it a watch. Um, and uh, yeah, who knows? I might make a, another little update video soon. I probably doubt it. You might not see me till next year, but... Um, I want to say thank you to everybody that commented and left me a like or a little love, little love heart thing on my uh, last post uh, about a week, like I say, a week ago. Just putting a couple of pictures up of my last session. Um, yeah, it was really nice, and it's nice to know that people still have you in the back of their minds. Um, and that's it. And uh, yeah, keep angling, keep catching plenty of fish. Um, look after your families, be safe, and uh, I'll speak to you all soon. Take care, peeps.